Hey guys, Ollie here, the wannabe pilot, wrapping up again what is the last of my seven CASA exams for my um, commercial pilot license. In the last video, I said that I had already done it when I did the last video, but I hadn't had a chance to jump in front of the camera and go through it all. So here it is AGK or Aircraft General Knowledge, 70%. That is number four in a row, which I've hit just on the pass mark or the barrier for a pass being 70% is the pass mark that you need to achieve. So I've got a bunch of KDRs, which I need to go through. I was way too cocky going into this exam. Given I've got a fairly practical uh, background and history of knowledge of cars, motors, boats, different mechanical bits and pieces like that, I probably didn't study as much as what I thought, oh, as much as what I should have, being that we're now in the world of aircraft. There's a lot of terminology and different bits and pieces which are nuanced to what someone who might have a bit of experience in automotive or other uh, motor bits and pieces might think they have, like myself. So lesson number one, don't be too fucking cocky going into your CASA exams thinking you know it all. Uh, because you'll come out with a pretty average mark. Right, so I'll go through all of my KDRs and I'll, as I go through them, I'll try and break down a little bit about each one of those KDRs so we can just get it all in one. First one, I laughed at this when I got it, air meter. I'm actually an electrician by trade, so the fact that I don't know how an air meter works uh, was pretty humorous. Understand that. There's a few different things that you need to understand to do the air meter is mainly is fault finding. What is it doing when you've got a fault in the aircraft? Understand where the electricity is going from the battery or from the alternator to the aircraft system. Engine cooling on descent, can't pinpoint exactly what this is talking about, but it's important to know what and how you can cool an engine uh, during a descent and how you can use that descent to cool the engine if it is getting overheated or if it's getting hot. Wastegate operations, again, like I said in the intro there, I've got a bit of experience with cars and turbos and things like that. And I must have been too cocky and not actually understood the terminology around wastegate operations and how they work within an aircraft. So read through your texts and understand the different parts and what's going on where with your turbochargers. Next KDR is turbocharger system, so pretty much the same thing. Airspeed limitation markings, so we're talking about ASI and what essentially is displayed on that, what the different lines mean. You know, you should have a pretty good grasp of that if you're going into your one of your CPL exams. You should know your way around an airspeed indicator, and that was a silly one that I, I stuffed up. Static vent blockages, the classic PPL questions. When, what, what's going on when you've got a plugged static vent? The old um, acronym HUD suck is a good one to remember there. Pedo, underread, descent, static, underreads on the climb. So when the static is blocked, you underread on the climb. If pedo is blocked, you underread on the descent. Good one to remember. Abnormal engine instrument. Uh, indications. This is a good one actually. I, I actually like the questions that Casa threw at us here because it made you think about what was happening in the aircraft under a fault condition. What is happening when you have a low oil pressure or what, what, what is happening when you have a high oil temperature. If you're doing some flying and you're preparing for this exam or if you're just going into your CPL or your PPL even, a good one to ask your instructor along the way, what would be happening now if we had low oil, what would be happening if you have oil, high oil pressure or high oil temperature? You know, what are the symptoms and how can I identify that? Something that I didn't do at all, really, spending that time with our instructors. And you know, looking back on it, because we don't fly so much or haven't been flying so much with an instructor next to, it, next to us, these are some of the things that you could actually incorporate and try and ask your instructor as you're flying around. Fuel flow gauge, to understand how the fuel flow gauge works. It's a couple of different types. You're obviously fuel flow, which is based on the pressure of the fuel. And the other one is like a, a water wheel. 
which uh, turns around and reads off of actual fuel flowing through uh, the pipe. Constant speed propellers. There's a lot to learn in AGK on how we're understanding CSUs and constant speed propellers, what's happening there. And try and get your head around that more than what you think. Carburetor icing, this is PPL stuff again. Understand what are the different parts of the carburetor which ice up under different conditions. What is a human atmosphere or wet atmosphere? What kind of icing does that create? And so on and so forth. So yeah, icing, that was a good one. It's a good one to use in your practical flying as well, because that will cause a fault. Changing power settings. I think this was coupled, you know, just talking about constant speed units, what's happening with your RPM, what's happening with your manifold pressure and so on and so forth when you're in flight. Understanding the relationship between RPM, manifold pressure and the pitch of your prop. That is probably a big chunk out of what is important to learn out of this subject, I think. I mean, it's probably the newest bit of learnings that we have to go through coming out of a obviously single engine piston aircraft with no pitching propeller flying the 172s or the Pipers or the 152s, which I've done so far. You don't have to even think about it, but then obviously going forth, jumping into the 206 in the last bit of training and then further and going to workforce, it's pretty much all we're going to be flying is CSUs. And, that relationship between manifold pressure and RPM. It's pretty important to get a good grasp on. And then uh, mixture control was my last KDR. So that, again, is all coupled with those four different variables, mixture control, RPM, manifold pressure, pitch of the propeller. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of where I went wrong in my AGK exam. I did use the Bob Tate book again, and uh, obviously our class time at the school to get a good understanding. We also went into the workshop and I rocked up a touch late, so I didn't get the best walk around. We did get to poke our hands in some of the different aircraft bits and pieces, which we hadn't been flying beforehand. So I'd recommend to do that as well. Bob Tate book was good, but it's a really practical one, this one. So if you are going through your PPL and you're moving into your CPL, I'd almost take that into consideration now and go, how can I ask as many questions from my instructor whilst we're flying to get the best understanding of this aircraft as we go through the training? If you do that, then you're already building that knowledge before you actually need it. And then when you go and layer that over the top of reading through the textbooks and doing the practice questions, you end up with a rock solid base knowledge to be able to nail this exam, take it into your flying as well. Yeah, that pretty much wraps up all of the seven CASA exams. I'm pretty pumped about that. Things coming up after this video, I guess, is I'm going to finish off my night VFR rating. A bit of a cool little video coming with that. And also my CPL uh, training flights and CPL flight test. So hoping that we'll get all of them done in the next couple months and have the license in my hot little hands by the end of the year, which would be really cool. Uh, thanks for everyone that shouted out and gave us some tips on how to improve some of these videos. So hopefully they're getting a little bit better as we go on. And um, if you can pick which one of the charts are up hanging up behind me, you get a gold star <laughs> or fucking something. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and uh, yeah, happy and safe flying if you're out there buzzing around. Cheers. <laughs>